Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest involvement. I really wanted to share this episode today because it is something that I have personally really been going through, especially for the past month. <laughs> so I think this airy season has been a little fiery for everyone, and it's not just airy season that overwhelm and obstacles and confrontations show up, though it may be magnetized right now, but it happens in life. No matter how balanced your chakras are, you're going to face obstacles as long as you are alive. And it's bullshit to think that you're going to reach a point of spirituality that you're never going to face an obstacle again. However, the way that we face that obstacle shifts when we have higher consciousness. So for myself, in the past month, it has been many different types of situations that have caused my body to create an armor. I know you know that feeling, that feeling like I can't fully trust because when I trust, my, my hope gets let down. You know, you maybe you have trusted someone with a project and they weren't able to finish it. Or maybe you trusted a friend to keep a secret of yours and they shared it. Or maybe you trusted a partner and they just disobeyed that trust for whatever reason. It could look like in so many ways, but so often we then have the proof, the evidence of why we can't trust others, why we can't have our hearts open, that it causes us to put on this body shield. This shield feels like a tensing in your chest. Like your heart literally has to have a metallic layer over it to protect itself from being shattered again. And there are micro shatters and macro shatters throughout our days. Sometimes just, you know, seeing something on social media that, that rubs you the wrong way or is about a really gruesome cause out there can break your heart. And then sometimes it's through larger situations, but... We are here on this three-dimensional planet, and there are so many things that could cause us to close our heart. And sometimes we feel like that's what growth is. Growth is becoming stronger, having more fortification around ourselves, having our guards up, not letting anyone ever take advantage of us again. You know, boundaries are such a big buzzword right now, and rightfully so. We haven't been taught boundaries But do boundaries mean we have to build walls around ourselves to keep everyone else out? Do they mean we have to question every single person because we're afraid we're going to give too much of ourselves and then end up disobeying our own hearts? How can we connect when we're always feeling like someone else is going to hurt me? And this is this interesting stage that we are at, I feel like, as a society, especially as a conscious community of realizing we are all one, and then also that we are all different. And how can we see that oneness while honoring the differences? So I found myself in these different circumstances showing up, getting stronger. You know, I'm a warrior. I can overcome this. I will have more layers and more boundaries around myself, and no one will mess with me again. But then I caught myself really feeling into this energy, really feeling into how my body felt with this armor around it. Is this the state that I want to live in? Does growth mean I have to numb myself from the world around me? Because if so, that's not the kind of growth I want. I want to grow with my heart open. I don't want the pains of the world to make me become a more cynical person the way that I saw so many adults when I was a kid and wondered, why don't they just care? You know, it's easy to become a pessimist. You have every reason to think, you know what? The world's going to shit. Everyone's screwed up. People take advantage of me. People are crazy. I don't want any part in this shit. Everyone is gone and lost their rockers except for me. It's easy to think that. It's easy to look at all that's wrong. It doesn't require much skill. We all know those people who are really great critics but can't seem to access their creator. That's the easy way out, to point at everything wrong with the world and to become so jaded, to become that pessimist and, in fact, create a personality out of it. I think that's pretty popular in New York. 
But is that the vibration that you want to live in? Do you want to be that person to find the cloud in the blue sky every single time? That person that whenever things are just going okay, or maybe even good, you find something wrong with it. What is the point of more accomplishments and achievements and success if your heart is so closed that you can't even feel it? You know, I think the patriarchy has painted this vision of success as the person on top. And to get on top, we have to step on a lot of people's heads, climb our way up that ladder, get that corner office, be so ruthless and so heartless that we can bear the grunt more than everyone else. And that's what the most successful person is, the person that worked the hardest, sacrificed the most, and was able to overcome the most hardship by closing their heart. Is that your version of success? It's important for us to really look at who we're becoming every single day and ask ourselves, is this the person I want to become? Because when we are on autopilot or when we are in response to the world around us, we are not choosing our optimal timeline. You know, there are many potential timelines that your soul can take. It's not just one. It's not just the path that you're on and that's it. You have free will, honey. (laughs) Yes, you have a dharma, a soul's purpose, but not everyone lives it. And in fact, there are many different manifestations that your soul's purpose can be acted upon. You know, your soul's purpose could take you to one direction, but then you can shift timelines and embody that purpose in a different way. And that's up to you being the conscious chooser at every step of the journey. Do I like the person I'm becoming? Do I feel like this is what I need to do to become successful? Do I think I need to be the strongest one, the one who can overcome it the most? And That feeling in my body, is that the feeling of winning to me? You know, in your life, you have the capacity to do many different things. There are many different archetypes that live inside of you. So which ones do you want to step into, embody, even though maybe it feels like you have to be in your warrior state or your survival state? Yes, there are some times that we have to overcome confrontations and become stronger, but that doesn't mean we have to close our hearts. That doesn't mean we have to numb ourselves from feeling. That doesn't mean we have to put out fires to live a successful life. It's time we really ask ourselves, how do I want to be spending my most valuable currency? And that currency It's not the dollars in your bank. And it is your time, but it's something even more than that. It's the energy in which you are spending your time. Because time is going to move anyways. And what is the point of getting everything done if you are so tense, so burnt out, so toughened up that you can't even feel it? So for me, I know that I want this life to be the life of the most flow and fun and joy and ease and fulfillment. I know I want to dance. My dream is to be DJing in Trinidad. (laughs) And to me, that feels like the ultimate expression of my dharma to show the world, but even more than that, show myself that it is possible to raise the vibration of the planet without matching the vibration of the planet, without becoming as dense and tough as the systems that I am here to help shift. (laughs) I'm not here to break them down or fight against them because I'm not contributing to that energy. I am here to be the embodiment of living joy. So what about you? What energy, what vibration are you here to carry? What frequency is your soul here to embody? And where is your dharma taking you? What pathway are you going to take to it? Because you can go the fun, flowy, easy way or the hard way. And that's up to you. We can be going down a roller coaster and gripping onto the sides and saying, no, 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 it's about to drop now. 
And that roller coaster is still going, but we're going to be really tense along the way and pretty sore after. Or we can put our arms up and scream at the top of our lungs and say, Wee! And cruise down that roller coaster from a place of ease and joy. And when it's done, we'll say, That was amazing. I'm going to do it again. So you can take the action but choose the energy you want to take the action through. Do you want to grip onto the sides, anxious about the uncertain? Or do you want to put your hands up and enjoy this as the ride of your life? You get to choose. You get to choose right now. At any given moment, we have the opportunity and the invitation to shift our timelines. So I know for me, when I caught myself like, okay, I see this energy that I can go into. It feels like heart closing. It feels like warrior. It feels like armor. This isn't the path for me. The path for me is open hearted. It's joy. It's laughter. It's dance. It's fun. It's flow. It's ease. It's harmony. It's unity. So I'm going to take that roller coaster. How about you? Thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to share that message from my heart to yours. And I am so excited because my 21 day Dharma discovery journey is open right now. We have an incredible offer for you. You can actually participate in my free discover your Dharma masterclass. The link is in the show notes. And after you're done watching the masterclass, I'm going to have a really special offer for you to participate in the 21 day Dharma discovery journey for a really amazing discount. So head over over to my show notes, you'll be able to watch my free Discover Your Dharma workshop. This is a recording of a workshop I actually did live in a mastermind. And I really discuss all facets of discovering your dharma. I answer questions. I give you journaling prompts. I speak about different types of resistance that you may overcome and my tools and practices to help you move through it. I also share about my dharma blueprint process, which is a process that anyone can do to remember their soul's purpose. So if you are interested in participating in that masterclass and then learning more about the 21-day dharma discovery journey, head over to my show notes right now or my website, highestselfpodcast.com. You'll be able to see it right there in the show notes for this episode. And I'm so excited for you to tune in and for the downloads that you're going to receive along the way. Again, that link is in the show notes. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next episode. Namaste.